CFTA, uh, the director said it already, you, you know that is one of the flagship projects of the first 10 year implementation plan under the African Union, uh, Agenda 2063, and you might wish to know that the Agenda 2063 is a, a master plan for Africa's uh, transformation, making it a global powerhouse for the future. This is a decision uh, agreed by the heads of states that we should take this route to have Africa as a powerhouse in 2063. Uh, in terms of background, CFTA is not new. CFTA initiative is directly linked to the objectives of the Abuja Treaty, which was adopt adopted in 1991. Uh, the objective of the Abuja Treaty was to create um, an African economic community to have a continent with one uh, customs union. Uh, things were moving very slowly until in 2012, the heads of state sat down again and said, look, we are not moving fast uh, to, uh, to achieve the objectives in the Abuja Treaty. So they decided that they should uh, 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 first track the implementation of the uh, targets or the activities in the Abuja Treaty. So in 2012, uh, they adopted an action plan for boosting the African trade. Uh, following this, in 2015, they agreed on the roadmap uh, on the establishment of the continental uh, uh, free trade area by 2017. This, this was um, um, an agreement to, to fast track the process. And within the same time, in 2015, uh, in Johannesburg, uh, the assembly also launched the negotiations. To make sure that the process is moving forward, they decided to have uh, these uh, negotiations launched. And uh, further to that, in Kigali 2016, uh, the AU summit reaffirmed the commitment uh, of fast, tra fast tracking the establishment of the CFTA in 2017. Of course, we did not manage to, to have it uh, uh, launched in 2017, uh, but uh, the initiative was uh, uh, initiated. Objectives, I think a lot of our statements have talked to it. I think we are talking about promoting industrialization, uh, removing the challenges of the uh, multiple and overlapping membership. We know that you belong to uh, a different tracks. For example, Malawi, you belong to SADIC, and you belong also to Comesa. So the issue comes in when you want to trade. Under whose uh, rules of origin are you going to trade? So we are saying that the coming of the CFTA, the continent, will now trade under one rules of origin. And all this a problem of uh, overlapping membership will, will be gone. Uh, some of the object objectives have already been uh, alluded to by, my, uh, by the people who are giving us uh, statements. In terms of structure, the CFTA have got three structures. The top part uh, is uh, the framework agreement, which defines the purpose and objective. Why are we having the CFTA? All that information is, is being given in the, in, the, in the first part. The main body, which is the middle part, uh, it contains the protocols. Protocols uh, of the agreement which entails all the instruments to be implemented. And we are talking about five of them, five or six of them, uh, which are trading goods, trading services, rules and procedures of uh, settlement disputes, investments, intellectual property rights, and competition policies. The last part uh, gives us the details. These are the annexes and guidelines uh, to support the work of the uh, 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 protocols. In terms of benefits, more has been said, but just to emphasize that inter-African trade will be improved. Apparently, we are talking about uh, 13 to 14 percent uh, uh, in terms of inter-African trade in Africa compared to other regions, uh, which is about 51% for Asia and 7% for the EU. So you can see that we are really not doing well. So CFTA is expected to increase the inter-African trade. And according to the study by the ECA, we are saying that if all measures are in place, we are going to increase inter-African trade by 50% uh, by 2022. So if member states will implement all the agreements and uh, being in, uh, effectively implemented, this is the number we are uh, giving to the, to the public. CFTA will also give the continent to speak with one voice. 
EU will not come to Malawi to speak to Malawi or to Komesa or the Sadiq. Now, EU or the Agoa will come to Malawi to speak, uh, to, will come to Africa to speak to the continent as one. We are also talking about job creation, uh, particularly for women and youth. Uh, Cross-border trade will, only, uh, will mainly be uh, done by women, and so the CFTA is giving a special priority to the youth and women. The linkage, uh, my director spoke to it, that uh, CFTA is linked to the Agenda 2063. So these are the seven aspirations how the CFTA is linked to the Agenda 63. In terms of uh, linking the CFTA to the ECA, REGS and AU initiatives, we are linking the CFTA through uh, some of the uh, programs being implemented by the C uh, AUC and ECA, particularly the uh, action plan for boosting uh, inter African trade. Uh, so CFTA is linked to in the areas of trade facilitation, uh, trade policies, productive capacity. The director has already said that we need to see how we're going to uh, produce goods for this uh, large market we are going to create. And uh, another way it is linking to the uh, initiatives, we are talking about the trade enablers. Uh, initiatives like PIDA, uh, Programs of Infrastructure Development for Africa and also programs for CADEC, um, comprehensive Africa agriculture development uh, programs, where we are saying that countries should commit 10% of their budget to agriculture. So we need to have uh, agriculture production so that we can uh, supply to the market which we are creating. And there is this fear that uh, what is going to happen, because the REX, the SADIC, the COMESA, we are already implementing the free trade areas. Now, with the coming of the uh, CFTA, content of free trade area, What's going to happen? I think this uh, issue was uh, addressed because the, the thinking was that uh, the CFTA will not absorb the existing uh, uh, structures, no. But it will build upon the existing work wherever possible progress has been made. That's why for the tripartite Comesa, SADIC and ESC, we are saying that the CFTA will build a lot from what has been done uh, on, on, on the uh, tripartite. And the, the thinking was that between 2015 and 2016, the consolidation of the existing structures will be done before the establishment of the CFTA in 2017. Negotiation processes, the speakers have already spoken to it, but in 2015, as I said, the negotiation processes were launched in South Africa, and the agreement was that the negotiation should be done in two phases. Phase one, which started in 2015, ended 2019. It was on uh, trading services, trading goods, and dispute settlements. This has been com concluded, except very few items which uh, we have taken them, uh, we have carried them over to 2019, uh, December. Phase two, we have just started uh, negotiating, and this will cover investment, intellectual property rights, and competition policies. Uh, we expect to finish this one in 2020. To make sure that the implementation is uh, on course, uh, the heads of state uh, assigned or appointed the president of Niger to be the champion of the process. And he has been doing this work until uh, the uh, agreement was launched. All African countries were involved in negotiations, as it was uh, spoken by the director of trade, uh, Mrs. Uh, Christina Zakeo was one of the people who represented Malawi. She is the chief negotiator, and I think she has done a good job. We have to really thank her from our side. <laughs> After the negotiations, I think the first work which was done was the creation of the, what we call technical working groups. These are the people who are digging the documents. If the countries are going to have a, a CFTA, what would be the challenges? What would be the benefits? So these people worked on the, uh, the annexes, which I've said that the annexes gives us the details on why we have to have the CFTA. They worked on the, a number of issues, the rules of origin, custom cooperation, NTBs, among others. Institution arrangement for implementation. This CFTA cannot just stand alone. We, de we need to have institutional arrangements. So the heads of state sat down and said, look, 
can you come up with the uh, institutional arrangements for uh, this uh, mechanism to work? So at the bottom line, you have the technical working groups, the people which I said uh, they were working uh, on technical issues. These were coming from all member states. They come up with the, uh, the data, the materials, the, analyzing the issues uh, about the agreement. And when they are done, they take these agreements, uh, the decision to negotiate in forums. The negotiating forums also coming from the member states, they look into the, these documents and see which one is relevant. And they submit their recommendations to the committee of senior trade officials. The trade officials take the documents and make some decisions for approval to the ministers of uh, trade. The African Minister of Trade, this is now the level where decisions are made. But uh, if you are not, if you haven't ratified for the CFTA, your minister is not a member of this group. So you can be in a committee of senior uh, trade officials, but if you haven't ratified, whether you have pushed a decision which is good for your country, when you reach at the African Union Minister of Trade, if you are not ratified, then you will not participate. So the ministers now take all the, uh, the decisions for, uh, for the senior officials, uh, look at them and submit to the assembly. Assembly is the political body which gives guidance in terms of the operation. For all these committees or stages to work, there is now a secretariat, CFT secretariat, which has been created to be taking meetings, to be supporting the meetings for all the uh, uh, committees which are set. And uh, an agreement has been done and the approval granted that the secretary will be in Ghana and it will be operational very, very soon. Milestone, where are we from the time we started uh, talking about CFTA? 2015, 2017, as I said, in June uh, 2015, uh, 2015 negoci negotiations were launched in South Africa. In February, they did not take time. The first meeting of the negotiating forum was held. In May 2016, 12 they adopted 12 negotiating, negotiating principles because they said, how are we going to move forward? They need to come up with a, a negotiating uh, principles so that everything will be, uh, will be principled. And in 2017, on 13 February, the technical groups meeting took place to look into the, uh, the principles which were adopted in, uh, in 2016. 2017, uh, agreement to liberalize 90% uh, of the products was uh, uh, adopted. 2018 to 2020, uh, we are talking of 2018 where the signing was done. The director and uh, also the ministry have spoken to it that that was the uh, historical moment for the continent whereby at one point, at one go, 44 African countries signed the agreement. That was in Kigali. Then in July 2018, uh, after the signing, that was, there was an adoption of 12 annexes to support uh, the, the protocols on the, on the CFTA. Just in May this year, the CFTA entered into force. So we are talking that the, the ship now is moving and is not coming back. So if you are not part of it, the ship has started moving. The CFTA is moving. I know Malawi, you have signed, but you haven't ratified, but I think now is the time with this uh, consultation that you help the government uh, to ratify the protocol and be part of the, uh, of the ship. Implications for Malawi. Malawi should have access to the market of 1.2 billion people. So if you are having challenges in terms of selling your, your product, I, I heard one uh, delegates uh, who say that they want to sell their product to, to, uh, to the continent. This is a time. The, uh, the market will be open and uh, you are, you'll be able to sell your products to the continent. Everywhere in, 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 the, in the country of, uh, of, of this continent, you can, you're going to take your uh, product. Industrialization and infrastructure development. We are saying that uh, the CFTA going to come with some demands, like maybe they want to facilitate trade. Maybe they can decide to have a road passing Zambia, Zimbabwe, uh, maybe Tanzania. So these are the, some of the benefits you can get from uh, uh, CFTA, because for the CFTA to be implemented, effectively imp implemented, you need to have uh, infrastructure. 
Another issue is the welfare. We are thinking that Malawi is going to benefit because we are talking of job creation, uh, particularly for the youth and, uh, and, the, and the women. I thank you very much for your attention.